Welcome back to Tip TV Finance, sponsored by Trade Signaler. I'm joined by David Jones, who's returned for a second visit to the Tip TV uh, bunker, uh, which is also Masquerades as a TV studio. Uh, you're an independent market analyst, um, concentrating on social media, social trading rather. Yeah, I'm doing some work with um, Trade Signaler and um, Aondo on social trading, on sort of copy trading, that sort of thing. Right, I mean, this area, it's uh, still relatively new. I don't think it's more than like five years old. Yeah. Has it come of age? Is it not just, a, is it, has it gone beyond being a fad or the latest buzzword? I think it has. I don't think it's grown that much in the UK in the last few years because I think the two sort of main brokers in the UK don't do it. So I think it's always had something of a, of a niche. And I think like me, like many people, you know, I was aware of it, but never really looked into it that much until um, this year and then started exploring it a bit more. And I thought, well, actually, it does have you know, quite a bit of merits in terms of you following other traders, um, s mimicking their trades on your account, setting the risk at the right level. I think it's an interesting add-on to traditional trading. So that's why, I mean, I mean I've teamed up with the guys at Trade Signal, and we, um, we, do, we write uh, a, like a, a regular review of traders to follow. That's, that's all free. So if, you, if you're on the app or download the app, you can see it on there. And is it any more complicated than copying other people's homework? Um, yeah, um, it's easier than copying other people's homework because um, I don't know, actually I suppose in this day and age people just do control C, control V to copy homework. So it's even easier than that, I think. But you're choosing people that you respect or you, you've seen that over the last few weeks, months, years, mm. they generally uh, you know, get things right and you, you're, you're able to you know, see what they do. Yeah, I mean there are potentially you know, hundreds if not thousands of traders to follow. And, um, you know, what, what you want to do is, is try and find what I want to do, is try and find ones clearly who've got, you know, a fairly solid track record. You know, that you don't want, if someone's making 15 to 20% a month, that's probably unsustainable, you know, but someone who can sit there and crunch out, you know, a few percent a quarter with a sort of relatively small drawdown, and that's of interest to me. And then just setting the risk parameters to one that fits my particular approach. So, so like I say, you know, every, every, every time we write the newsletter, we put in a trader who might be worth following. I think the one who's going out in the next one, which should be out tomorrow, is someone called Edel Mattel. Again, who just seems to sit there. The P&L chart looks like that, which for me is perfect. You know, you just want nice, steady profits. So I, you know, I don't think it's, it's not something to get rich quick from, you know, but it's, it's another, another avenue to have some exposure to the markets and maybe make you know, a decent annual return. I think apart from copying the homework though, I mean the main bonus for most of us is that we can keep an eye on the market without actually having, and still have a day job at the same time. Yeah, I think, I think a common complaint, you know, from my days at IG and CMC was what people would say, I don't have time. I don't have time to sit there and analyze 30 Forex pairs. I don't have time to watch the DAX, watch the Dow. And I think this is a way, like you say, of gaining exposure because you can set it up so it automatically mimics the trades on your account, on a demo account or a real account. So you can have some exposure to the markets um, without, if you don't want to, making your own decisions. I mean, personally, you know, I just run it side by side, making my own decisions. But I think it's, uh, it's an interesting angle. Right. The other thing I want to talk to you, because we are, I mean, we're speaking in the run up to uh, some big events, so a big interest rate decision, non-farm payrolls. Um, I mean, it, it doesn't have to be the ones in August. It could be any time of the year. Um, the, it, it, instinctively, you can, you, I suppose, you say, "Well, um, the big money we've made if you took a, a correct punt on the right in the, in the right direction." So yeah. you're just betting on the next payrolls to be weak and the market to go down, etc. Um, but is that is, is wait and see better than t taking the punt beforehand? Personally, I would say wait and see. You know, because because even if you knew what the payrolls announcement was going to be and what the interest rate decision was going to be. Um, the, market, the market can often react completely opposite to that. You know? so, um, so I, and again, from my experience, and I think this is one, you know, the retail brokers, the minutes, the couple of minutes after the, the payrolls come out, so half on on the, on the first Friday typically, um, you know, tends to be the highest volume couple of minutes about the whole month. So I think plenty of people do sit there and wait. But I'd also say that maybe trading in that next couple of minutes isn't ideal either because 
it can move one way for 15 minutes and then suddenly the market thinks, oh, actually, we've changed our mind on our interpretation of this and it switches the other way. So I don't, I think it's, it's always exciting because it's massively volatile, but I don't think anyone should kid themselves that it's an easy one to trade, I think, because of that volatility and uncertainty. I mean, the other thing, the rule, I suppose, with the non-farm payrolls, which I, is maybe the, the only one which has any merit at all, is that the initial move is the wrong way. Mm. That yeah. tends to be the, the, the one that works. So for the first 15 minutes, 20 minutes, take it the wrong way um, or take it too much one way. Yeah. And then it'll, it comes all the way back. So you're, you, you go against the initial move. And that's, if you're why, do anything. that's why things like op some option strategies can be useful on that. We used to, again, going back a bit, do, do daily options, you know, selling, selling the, the call and selling the put, selling the straddle, because the volatility would be high. So you get a lot of money. You might get, I don't know. 70 or 80 points for a daily Dow option uh, at the strike price just before, just where it was before the, the number came out. And what you're banking on is plenty of volatility, but the market ends the day roughly where it was when the payrolls come out. And that does happen, you know, quite a bit of the time. But there are times, of course, where you will get a 300-point move uh, in one direction all day long. So you need to, I think, have the risk managed for that. But, but you're right, I think going against that initial move isn't a bad idea at all, but it, I think it's waiting for that initial move to run out of steam. Don't you know if it goes up, don't blindly sell it after five minutes. Yes, I think a couple of months ago there was a, a, a knockout figure. Yeah. which it, it just it went up and it stayed up. And there was it was no, I remember it was that one. It was that much worse than expected one, wasn't it? And it was because I think I was watching Dollar Canada. I think Dollar Canada dropped something like 200, 250 points in the afternoon. So we saw a big dollar sell off. You're right. So that the initial move ended up being the right move on that day. Yeah, horrible. Um, just finally, uh, we're, we're in August. I'm putting you a bit on the spot. Do you think the market's vulnerable this month uh, in the same way that it was last year? Well, last year it was Chinese-driven. You know, I don't think we've got maybe those sort of risks. But I think the market, you know, the last, the last week, the Dow has been drifting off. We had that weak GDP number from the US last Friday. Stock markets have come an awful long way since the Brexit vote. So even though the trend is up, you know, markets do look, I think, a little bit overheated up here. OK, well, we'll see what happens. David Jones, Independent Market uh, Analyst, thank you very much for coming in today. We'll be back after the break.